<laughs> Don't say shit or bugger. We are live. We are live on the YouTubes. Okay. Um, I think we should just get a cracking with a, with an intro, and we'll take it from there, lads. Eh? Hi, this is Don Matteo, and then you are listening to the Auto Know Better podcast. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> You look like fucking Brolin, you're a Leeds hating bastard. <laughs> oh, like. <laughs> like some sort of fucking weird floating head. No. <laughs> you tensile played a bit, innit? I mean, I feel a bit like dickhead. Nothing spectacular, really. Hello and good evening, all you wonderful people. This is the Ought to Know Better podcast. Season 4, episode 34, as it happens. Uh, we are live. Stop saying shit or bugger. We'll be nice to each other in the comments. I'm joined by Jay Carter this evening. How are you? Looking very well combed. I'm all right, mate. I wouldn't say that much. I've been out under a car. It's uh, it's just yeah. as it is, mate. Is that what it is? I thought you had makeup on you. I thought you were auditioning for Kiss or something like that. It's, is it it's snowing outside? Yeah. You've got a bit of snow on the old beard there, James. It's um, great dust. Yeah, well, yeah. White brake dust. Dandruff. Anyway, we are joined also by uh, Luke, which is the reason why we're late tonight, because he's been combing his hair as well. Yeah. Uh, good How are we doing, mate? You're right. Uh, yeah, yeah, phantasmagorical, to be honest oh. with you. I'm, uh, My better ass kicking off with the children, just as we go live, lovely stuff. <laughs> Get to fucking bed! <laughs> yeah. At least you booted tap dancer out. Yeah, yeah, little um, it, my tap dancers are out of, out of way now. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome along. Get your comments into uh, into us this evening. We've got I can see quite a few people, you know. Gilly's in there as well, look. Uh, we'll do uh, we'll do a bit of interacting with you this evening on all the way. Um, we don't have any prediction stuff because we all thought we were going to batter Coventry and Sunderland, and none of us did. None of us got any points because none of us predicted a draw or a loss. So we can skip straight past that. No Baradi and Coke either because we thought we'll, we'll we might as well do it today. Hold on, Christ, I'm having a fight with my mic here. So we might as well do a bit of a Baradi and Coke tonight, lads, and we'll cover the uh, for the Sunderland game. How did you feel we got on, James? Shit. Nice. <laughs> Straighten. <laughs> Say what you really mean. It, it was just frustrating, mate. It was just frustrating. Like it felt like a a big game after the previous result, and I just feel like we didn't really turn up, and that's that's the worst part. The referee was shocking, but. You should have enough about you to be beating teams like Sunderland at this stage in the season, even with a shit ref. But, you know, the, the some of the stuff that you let go, including stuff we'll talk about at some point. Um, it well, was a better time than now, Jay. Well, yeah, fair enough. I mean, the, <laughs> get it off your chest, get, get it off your little chest. We, we, we had the elbow, but we also had the, uh, the hand of God, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. And the guy even went like this after. Went like what? What, like ow? What, like an owl like sort of thing. I didn't see that. I didn't see that bit. Yeah, he actually, shook his hand up. For the first time in a very, very long time, well, at least till last season, I got up on the back of my chair and started going absolute <laughs> fucking mental. I'm surprised no one saw me because it's not like you can't see me. Six foot four blow cut back Mate, in his I chair. I went south stand. I went, hey, fucking corrupt bastards. Yeah, we won't see I, I exactly berserk. what I said. You, you won't uh, see me, though. People just think there's a Tasmanian devil next to them. Yeah, well, they won't see you even if you were still on back of your seat, will they? That's what I mean, Matt. I, 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 would, I couldn't believe it. Do you know what I mean? It, you it would just be a crouch's shoulders to be seen. <laughs> like Master Blaster in Mad Max 3. Um, <laughs> Master Blaster. Yeah, it, it would just, it, it were unbelievable. It would just, I, it was stood right near it. Like, what's wrong with these referees? Like, are they, are they corrupt or are they just really fucking shit? Because either way, it didn't work. This league is awful. I would hate you bring? It. Would you would on that note then? Look, they missed two clear up clear penalty shouts. Yeah, mm. but I would rather they miss those. And I know this is going to sound counterproductive because of what's happened to us this week. With actually, we could have won that game and we could have been now sitting top of the league. But mm. I would rather that happen and balance out over a season. Look, we handballed one in with Paddy the other week, and and we got away with that. Do you know what I mean? So, um, you'd rather things like that happen, wouldn't you, than 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 have to watch VAR and wait in the stadium? And I I think VAR would have been kind to us this year because we're one of the, you know, one of the big guns, shall we say, in a, a big fish yeah. in, in a small in, in in the pond. And and, and I and think it probably would be kind. Of, and, a lot. and I think I think that probably reflects on every league. The bigger tides tend to get rubber the green. Um, but but I still 
would rather have no VAR. Like I would. And and I remember I remember some um some data was brought out at some stage in the in the Premier League that are saying how many how many points we would have been without VAR and, and everything. And we would have been far better off without VAR. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, at that stage. I can't remember exactly. It might have been L U F C data or, or one of them one of them one of them data people. Um but, but like I can't 15 points. I want to say it were about 15 points. It was a lot more off. yeah it was a lot more than I expected. Um yeah. but but the, the just the whole the whole stopping and starting just it it's not enjoyable is it like it's not what you play to go to watch a football it's taking away it's taking away this it's not becoming a spectator sport it's becoming you know what? a sport for people to watch on telly it is yeah absolutely but do you know what if var was better implemented then i would i would have it but like as someone says in the comments they still get it wrong anyway and yeah as we saw in the Premier League, like when Harry Kane bundled Melier into the net, or somebody did, not Kane scored, didn't they? Um, and it, it didn't even get looked at. And... Heiberg, Heiberg, bundled yeah, that's right, yeah, that's so. right. Mm-hmm. And it's it, it's gone, it goes from one extreme in the Championship where you want stuff to be looked at to a thing in the Premier League where the refs barely do the job anymore because they expect that safety net to pick it up if something is yeah. wrong or something does need deciding. And the, the, there has to be somewhere in the middle. Where people just, are looking at it and getting it right. It just shows a massive contrast between, you know, you're relying on dipsticks with flags and, you know, on a whistle yeah. in our pie and pee league. And then yeah. in the Premier League, you've got some dipstick with a pie, uh, with a pie and a whistle, with a, flag <laughs> and a, with a flag and a whistle, and a couple of TV screens with some odd dickheads up in a room in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's, I think you know, I think they're all getting hammered, mate. People at Stockley Park. I think they're just on it during matches. Well, they've just uh, announced the way they can explain some of the decisions. They're introducing semi-automated um, offside stuff next yeah. year. Aren't they? Have you seen how that works? It's actually quite good. Like, it is well, they've been using good. it in Europe, haven't they? Yeah. So or was it, it no? Was it the uh, World Cup or Euros? Is it an AI it? thing? It's yeah. So it's it's pretty much it takes it away from anybody. So it's it's just computer generated, and it's all it's all if it's offside, it's offside. But again. That doesn't always work. Look at that. Villa when they stayed up that season when when the goal line technology had failed. Do you know what I mean? So, well, someone yeah. t- forgot to turn it on, didn't they? Yeah, that's so a massive, I think, massive area that one. I think offside I, for I, me should still be just where your feet are. I, th- I think the more we lean towards, I think people want fair results, right? But I think it has to start with better training and better referees. I think I think that ultimately has to be the ballpark and the bench benchmark for. For for everybody, uh, mm. for every league and and everything, and it should filter down. I, I don't see. There's no reason why a referee should be getting. I mean, he could see the first one. It was a directly in line. The second one a little bit tougher because he had Joey Rodham's head in there, and and it was it was it was a little bit tougher to see from a ref's angle. He should have still seen it. Or the line. Where's, where's the line though in that situation? Exactly, exactly. But I think the more we lean to, I think the more we lean to to, to actual actually using technology for to make these decisions for us where does it stop like do you know what i mean because yeah. it's going to be it's going to be for offsides and goals and, and everything else and mm-hmm. and then what did they have too many did you know did did the player run off the field at the at, you know you know they've got to go off the field at the nearest the nearest touch line oh, yeah do we yeah. then start looking using using var for that and stuff it just it just yeah. it, it it all very much leads to me to a to a to a game that's not enjoyable to watch for for a spectator you don't want football to be too clinical, do you? It's nah, meant to man. be about passion and people, you know, human competition. People make mistakes sometimes. Mm. Sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. I'm Can't all right with that. turned into a but, frigging bar. But, I know. But, it's ex- but, but it's we expected, seem to be getting hammered a lot with bad decisions, um, and that's putting think, me on the fence. Without, without going too much into this anymore, because we're obviously we're, we've... we've I'm, I'm bored of the whole VR, yeah, VR yeah. conversation. And we're, if we get promoted, it's bound to crop up again next year. The only thing I will say, I mean, it's too open to interpretation at the minute. If they do bring in this semi-automated stuff, it completely takes that element away from it. The only thing that now that we rely on is people actually doing the jobs on the field, i.e. the, the referees and the, and the, and the side, side people, the linesmen, or lines people. Are you allowed side to call them people? linesmen anymore? Are you allowed to call them yeah. lines men? But you should say that. The lines should person? say that. Lines... I went to uh, um... I went to, I went to watch my daughter play football uh, a week or two ago, and I, I went man on shit, girl on, woman on. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't. I honestly didn't know what. There's a human and, 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 being closing in your personal space. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so and I uh, apparently are still allowed to say Manon because the, oh, the, yeah. the female coach of the, of the team that they were playing against said no, it's still cool to say Manon. Uh, uh, wonder how long that's going to last. Yeah, probably not long. Oh, um, well. But yeah, yeah, fuck VAR. Uh, we just want better refs because they're just shit um, and the amount of d decisions. The whole handball thing, the first one, the first handball where they kind of like lent into it, you think... Bamford did worse. I can, I can, I can get over that. That's not an outrageous handball. Yeah, he's nudged it. He's got away mm. with it. Whatever. I'm not going to lose my marbles over it. Um, however, the, the the second one were just an absolutely disgraceful, just disgraceful. The fact that he, you know, Rodan were having his shirt pulled. He's been slapped in the face. The actual when it happened, I don't know if you heard it, Jay, from where you were standing, but when it came over, you could hear the slap. Of yeah, the ball yeah. to his hand. I actually audibly heard that. I mean, I'm not saying that the atmosphere is absolutely rocking, but it wasn't quiet. But I could actually mm. hear the audible slap of the ball hitting his hand. And I'm just like, you could even hear it. And he yeah, stood yeah. literally 10 yards away. He's looking right at it. And that shivering shithouse linesman that were on mm. the Sunderland side, you could tell he were, he were nervous. He looked edgy as fuck. He yeah. looked like he was doing nervous shits all game. <laughs> Honestly, he did not enjoy himself where he was. I say bring um, this ref to the league. Absolutely. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Works for me. Do you know what I don't get though? Like, if refs do shit in the Premier League, they get sent to our league the the weekend after. Like, why? <laughs> yeah. Why does a ref sure. get suffer inflicted? In the championship. Yeah. And the championship why, will why suffer does, for having you. Why does a ref get inflicted on someone else when they shit? Why don't they have to sit out a week and not get paid that week? Do you know what I mean? You you don't get to ref this like week. Like it's a punishment. Going to championships we've got, a punishment. We've got yeah. we've got yeah, an exactly. openly open on. Uh, We've got an open uh, uh, what an open I don't know how, how <laughs> to say it. Open, an openly well they're open about who they support. We've got a Sheffield Wednesday fan refereeing us at the weekend. Yeah, and it's they, they're quite open and, and and obvious about that. Like that hmm. that, that that shouldn't be happening. Like you know, what it I mean? doesn't like, sit right, does it? <laughs> no. To be fair though, there's no ref anywhere that'd like us, so he probably won't really like make yeah. any difference for us. Everyone hates. It's one us, of the massive so. issues you've got when uh, you've got that much of or that many people that don't like you. Um, I think it. we've swayed a little bit. Um, yes. Luke, give me your thoughts over the game, please. Highs, lows. What's your overall thoughts? Um, I, do you know what? I'm going to sort of contradict everything I've probably said over the last few days, but I actually don't think we played too badly. I just think we were missing mm. that creative spark we we controlled i would say probably for 85 minutes i don't think they really ever looked like scoring mainly made a couple of good saves from jack clark when he sent road on for a hot dog um and mm. yeah other than that they didn't look really threatening they were quite happy to sit with five and four behind the ball and leave one up top weren't they they were quite happy to defend yeah. and 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 that's how they were set up and 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 i think for us, it's quite frustrating when we play against teams like that and it almost took me back to when we struggled against teams like that toward the end of the first half of the season around Christmas time um, when we couldn't break teams down like that and we didn't seem to have a plan B and then we threw Rutter in there and and that plan that was our plan B R play, 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 R play Rutter in the 10 and, and all of a sudden play Baddy up front and we've got loads of extra movement now what teams have learned to do is just put two defenders because they played five at the back put two defenders on Cree two defenders on Rutter we've got no creativity it, it just mm. goes and and the fact that we don't ever switch the ball teams know that so we've got Dan James and Archie Gray in a, in a fucking fuckload of space on the right hand mm -hmm. side but yeah but actually we're not we teams know that we're not going to ever switch the ball out to him so we can just we they can happily mark Rutter and and, and Cree and have yeah. and, and overload those two players now that negates us now I think there's a few things that, that that to take out of that game. I think I think first of all, Rutter was really really poor. Um, yeah. Uh, by 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 his standards, and I think he has been, been since he's had his operation. I don't know if we could bring give him his hernia back or what, but he was he was much better when he when he was playing with an hernia. Um, and 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 I don't think that's his bring, fault. Bring it know. back. Yeah, bring back the hernia. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think um, I don't think that's his fault. I think he's been he's been asked to take. A lot of responsibility starting in that ten role somewhere he's never played before in a mm. in a promotion battle um, and learn on the job pretty much and he hasn't got a mentor we've he's got nobody we've got no natural ten to teach him what he should be doing we're relying on Daniel Farker and his coaching team giving him the right instructions now only he can release a ball sooner to the right hand side or or whichever side only he can stop taking five touches before he wants to make a pass mm. but ultimately. It's, it, 
the thing that frustrates me more about him is his, is his defensive work rate, and he doesn't just he lets Paddy do all the running, and and that it just it just creates such an easy out ball for anybody we play against. They just bypass Rutter and Bamford so so easily because if they got five at the back, Paddy presses one, they've got three three or four other players to play around. Rutter doesn't mm-hmm. press; he stays stagnant, and they play it around him, and it's it's just frustrating. But look, I yeah. don't really want to single him out because I don't think anybody was great. Uh, and anybody sort of pulled the socks mm. up and 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 gave us something that we needed. But um, one thing I would say is that although I've I've been very defendant of of Daniel Farker and his decisions all season, we do need to start seeing some changes a little bit sooner in games like that. Um, I'll tell you what, mate. It's like you've it's read 100%. everything that I've written down on this sheet of paper. Because you're, <laughs> honestly, it's it's strange because you've literally said everything. I was literally just about to say the last thing about Daniel Farker leaving his way, and I've got way in capital letters here on my sheet. Too late. So before you get into the substitutions, then were you happy with the starting eleven? Sorry. Before we get into the subs, were you happy? Would you have changed anything to the starting eleven before we'd have gone into the game? No, no. I think I think that would have been my starting eleven. I, I mean, people, it's it's very easy in hi- hindsight to say no, it wouldn't have been my starting eleven. We should have started Matteo Joseph. We should have started Willie Nonto. But we, we don't see these players yeah. week in week out in training. We, you know, we we have seen how good Paddy can be, and he's he's probably not been to the standard. But the things that he does do, he does really really well. You know, he he, he invited. Ballard or nine into into early fouls. They got yellow who cards. Who should have been he was sent putting, off? Yeah, who should have been sent off? <laughs> so yeah. I don't think I don't think I would have changed anything. I just think I think I think probably tactically more than personnel wise would have been would have been my major change. Mm. What I would thoughts have made about Kamara. What are your thoughts on Kamara, Jay? Um, he seemed just as crap as everyone else against <laughs> Sunderland. Mm. Um, I, I don't think he particularly stood out as bad compared to everyone else. I don't think anyone played that well. I think recently he has looked tired, but yeah, I don't think it were a significant, you know, starting him in that game. I don't think it were a major sort of factor in what happened. I, I would have made a couple of changes myself and I would have found room for Roberts and Nonto, and that would have probably meant that Kamara didn't start for me, but I, I don't think like you could throw the blame on him for that performance. No, I don't think so. It's just, it seems, I mean, I've said it a few times, and I know others have as well, that whenever we seem to be getting or losing the fight in the middle of the park, Kamara goes kind of missing. Or, Mm. you know, if he does have any kind of involvement, if we haven't passed the ball around the back, you know, four defenders and Melier for the last five minutes, then we might make a a, a pass into into Kamara, who might do a shimmy, shimmy to the left or shimmy to the right, and then pass it backwards. And then Ampadu may do a glory ball that will go to absolutely no one, and hey, presto, we're being countered. Um, it See, was frustrating last night to watch. The the, know, the thing, well, two last nights night. ago, but yeah, yeah. Um, the 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 passing back all the time, the patient possession build up thing, is killing the atmosphere in the ground. It is killing the atmosphere every time the ball goes yeah. back to Melier. Now there's an audible groan, and it's just a bit too much for me. I mean, yeah. you know. Farker clearly has done a great job, so I'm not going to criticise him too much and start trying to make out he doesn't know what he's doing because he does. But there are little things like that that, that piss me off and the, the the defenders must touch the ball more than anyone else on the field. And it just it drives me mad sometimes. when we like, Even in stoppage time, we're going backwards mm. when it should just think- be forward, forward, forward. And it's just too much for me. It's, just, it's the wrong side of that balance. I completely agree, but I think we were spoiled by... By our previous great manager. Who, who oh was, yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. Who, I, mean, it, I mean, we could say his name, yeah. but I don't know there's always going to be comparisons made, and we always say we shouldn't make comparisons. But but I was watching that build up actually, the goal, the build up to Dallas's goal at Stoke, and the difference was the only difference was that they took a chance with some passes, whereas Farker, we're, we're far more yeah. organised, we're far more, we're far more condensed, and 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 that, but we just don't seem to take as many chances with 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 passes. Um, and you look at there's two or three passes in that in that in that build up that actually should should probably never have been made realistically if, unless mm. you're going to take a real chance you know nowadays you probably wouldn't see those chances being made but it is it's, no, it's completely no. uh, the game's evolved even over the over the last three four five years it's it's very much possession based like teams it's, not, it's mine I'm going to fucking <laughs> clip him in a minute I 
think um, for, for myself, I, I mean, as frustrating as it was, I don't think we played that bad. The battle of the midfield was completely and totally lost, I might say. But, you know, Sunderland are playing with a little bit of freedom now because they know that they're, not, they're obviously not going to get relegated because they're far too far away from it. And they're not going to get promoted. There's a cluster of four teams in the middle of the league now that are just like, it's like us when we were in the Premier League first season. You know, we played with that little bit of freedom because we knew we weren't getting relegated. So we could just go mm. out and enjoy ourselves. The, the frustrating thing for me was that the fact that they decided to park the bus and play so reservedly. You know, I was like, well, you've got nothing to lose. Why are you trying to play football? You know, you've got your fancy yeah. man, Jack Clark, out on the wing, who's trying to nutmeg everyone. We thought Robert, uh, Robert's, uh, well, yeah, Robert's hand actually graded really, really well against. Obviously, like Luke said, he sent Road on for a bit of an odd dog. But apart from mm -hmm. that, I thought, you know, we kept him pretty much at bay. Yeah. Um, but I, I just don't, is it is it the team that, you know, we've done so well and been so consistent up to, you know, three or four games ago. And now is, is the pressure getting to him a little bit? You know, we've all, you know, berated Leicester and Ipswich and Southampton for buckling under the pressure. But now the pressure is equally on our shoulders. Are they too scared to it take is, the risks? Yeah. Are they feeling the pressure? They must be to a degree because they, they, well, it seems like they're shit scared to make any mistakes, which is why we're playing so... Some of the risky risky passes they made out from the back was rode on an ampadu and they were misplaced. They were shite. Mm. They, they tried it three or it's four like times. A desperate, it's like a desperate yeah, yeah. pass because we've kept the ball for so long. It's like, you can, yeah. you can literally, I can literally feel the soul leaving my lifeless yeah. corpse. I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, quite a few times this season, and Coventry for definitely, not... Bearing in mind, I was at uh, an event on Friday and I was absolutely, utterly gazeboed and very <laughs> hungover on Saturday morning. Um, I fell asleep in second half and I actually missed. <laughs> I actually missed Piro's goal because I was, I was wow. just, I was just watching him, just flicking it around back, and I just, and I fell asleep. Watched the whole, the whole of the Ipswich game beforehand and fell asleep during hours because it's so frigging boring and so just so passive. And like you said, you know, we're always going to compare stuff to Bielsa's team because for most of us, it's the best football that we've ever seen. So it's always there's always going to be a comparison there. I don't really mm -hmm. want to edge too much, but it were the edge of the seat stuff, you know, and and it was scripted, it was this, it was that, but it was exciting, and we used to love it. Whereas this is all very, it's very calm, it's very collected, it's very you know controlled and stuff, and it's all like yeah, we're getting results, but fucking hell. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love watching Ampadu and Rodon do 5,000 fucking passes each and get highest fucking passing you know, statistics in league and all that sort of stuff. But I'd love to see my number nine striker fucking firing a few balls into back in there. That Absolutely. would just be lovely. You know, Absolutely. And, and just for, me, for me, given I've that we've got four think... games left now, we really do need to pull us fucking. Yeah, we need to take, yeah, take, 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 you know, take, take the, uh, the ball and chain as somebody, somebody said there. We need to. Release our, our our creative players and let them do what they're good at. You're willing on to you 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 rutter. So stop me. We 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 might suffer defensively because of it. We might suffer defensively, but but ultimately we we're, we're far far more dominant man for man than the majority in this league. So yeah, we are, let yeah. the defenders let the defenders defend. Let the attackers attack. Do you know what I mean? But let let them, let them have that little bit of creative freedom, that little bit of spark. Right. Just go do something for 10, 15 minutes. Don't don't run down the left, turn back and pass it back to the left back. So who's going to pass it to Ampadu? Who's going to pass it to Rodon? Who's going to pass it to Archie Gray? Who's going to pass it into one of the midfielders? Who's going to then pass it back to Rodon? Do you know what I mean? It's it's uh, it's all too it's all too scripted. I suppose it's mean, probably the best way. It is scripted, uh, but in way. a negative way though. Because like you you look I, at the scripted scriptive nature of the Bielsa's team. You know there were passages of play that it was quick passing. We can do three or four passes and not get to the edge of our fucking eighteen yard box, but we can lose yeah. the ball three or four <laughs> passes later. Sunderland are at the edge of ours, you know, and that, that that's a massive difference. You know, they're, they're busting the guts to try and get forward and to real pressure difference us. in those two though. I don't mm -hmm. think this team is half as fit as what Bielsa's team was. Uh, no, no, no. I don't think no, any no, no. team is. But then again, you know, like you, well, like Jay just said, you know, there, there aren't many teams that are. No, no. Do you know so I, what he's... I did notice as well? Though, like we we never set Jan, Dan James free. Really, like it was it was ready to go so many times. So frustrating, isn't it? And we never pinged the ball over for him. And I, I just to be don't fair, know when I did, it was shit. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> Didn't get many you know, chances, though, did they? Pe people, people, not Calvin Phillips and so. Oh, no, we never have him back in this and the other. You know, back in the old days. You know, a few seasons ago now, but your Ben Whites and your Calvin Phillips would pick a ball at the edge of our box and look to see Dan James in a in a, in a meadow of fucking space and and Archie Gray as well. They were both sat there. They might as well have had the frigging picnic blankets out and supping fucking cups of tea <laughs> because they were absolutely in acres of space doing nothing. It would have been mm. one quick ball and Dan James with th fucking thirty yards of space on nearest defender is gone. Yeah. 
All of a sudden, Sunderland have gone, oh shit, Dan James, fastest fucking thing on with, on two legs, is running down bloody right wing, and we've got yeah. no one covering him. It may, you know, it, we don't seem to fastest spread thing teams. on two legs other than a cheetah who needs the toilet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it might even have taken, uh, it might Number even have two taken. Especially, they're just holding, yeah. he's holding it in going, <laughs> could plug the tail up though, couldn't they? Could use a tail as a plug. It might oh, even hey, have taken Jack Clark you, out of the yeah. game a bit because they might have had yeah. to put him on him to try and chase him. Exactly. But you, you, you're not getting anywhere near Dan James, are you? Even with ball at no. his feet, he's left you for fucking, you know, gone. Little yeah. roadrunner. But yeah, it's just frustrating because, like, you know, I've seen a few people comment so in the in the, in the the comments as well. You know, the, the amount of space that they were seeing and, and not who's, utilizing. Who's got 50 pence in Gilly tonight? I think he William wants to Cooper be. Why don't you just come on, Gilly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Liam Cooper would have probably swung and missed at the frigging thing or passed it to one of their players. Like nah, I was did. I'm not having any I'm not having any any No, we're not having, we're not having any Cooper not, no, we'll, having we'll leave that alone. Team. He's not done all wrong. He's, 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 he's a top captain and a bloody lovely lad is Liam. We've always said so. A, even if we lad. don't rate him that highly as a footballer anymore. Correct. But um but yeah, he's, he's a still he's still a fucking top bloke. Um so yeah, Brad and Cook then, that's pretty much wrapped that up, hasn't it? Have you got anything else really to say on the game, boys? We've kind of generalised a little bit. Not a right lot. Not, I think we've we've gone into it, haven't we? We did we talked about the subs, didn't we? Being too late and I think yeah, I, mean, I think we've been a bit harsh on ourselves as well. They've got four clean sheets in five, you know, that they're, they're set up to to not lose and, 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 and they seem to do it well. So I think if we've if we've been over we have probably been overcritical, we dominated mo the majority of the game. And on another day we'd have had two penalties and they'd have had a red card and, and it could have been a completely different result. We shouldn't be reliant on those those sorts of things happening in games, but ultimately that was the difference. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Would you lads no. say in hindsight the Watford result doesn't look so bad now, seeing that they've gone and also held it switched to Agreed. a point? They seem to have yeah. turned the corner, don't they? Yeah, I yeah. just think it's fantastic that all three teams uh, trying to do <laughs> their best ball. to take this right to the frigging end of the season. No, you that know, was really. the first time. That was the first time since Boxing Day that all three teams haven't won in the league. Uh, Barry, Leicester, Leicester and Ipswich played each other, mind, but um, yeah. I wonder what odds you'd have got on all three not scoring in this midweek as well. By the it's way, absolutely yeah. mad, isn't it? it is Probably mad. about hundred and twenty or one or something daft. Oh, I, I, I'd bet with you, Jay Carter. <laughs> bet Jay. <laughs> bet Jay. Yeah, right. So close at top now, isn't it? Ridiculous. I mean, obviously Leicester it's, have it's got mental, Southampton to play, but Leicester are kind of. They're not doing too well, are they? They're, they're stalling yeah. a little bit. South and then they've got this, this news coming over them today as well about Maresca kicking off about fixtures and having to travel down to Plymouth. Yeah. Everyone has had to travel down oh, to there? Plymouth Maresca. Everybody has had that. to go down there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He's, he, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he's cut about the congestion. and. We had to go to Plymouth, come back, go to Swansea. Swansea, back. Come back. Then Didn't Plymouth again. Bristol then? Then oh, Plymouth again. Yeah, then we had an own game so. and then and then we and had Bristol. and then we had Plymouth away. Yeah. So we couldn't even stay down there because we had to come back. He's just that guy, right? He's a fraud. He's he's got no experience gonna, yeah. of picking a team up that's in bad form because he's not done out yet. It's all fucking great when you come to a team for. and it, and it's all going awesome and everything's working. We've seen how that goes for people like even Steven Gerrard with Rangers. You know, sometimes you can get someone who's, you know, they, they know enough <laughs> to get by, but they end it's... up in a situation that just works. And yeah, then yeah. when it falls apart, they can't bring it back because they don't have the experience to do so. This is That's the a danger for them. This is Rob Tanner, I'm guessing it. Rob Tanner, LC, LCFC, I'm guessing it's some sort of report for Leicester. Enzo Moresco has had his say about the scheduling and he's not happy man as El El Leicester City faced a long trip to Plymouth. This is this is, this is is the reply of the year. Yes, everyone in the Championship has to make the long trip to Plymouth, unfortunately, because they're in the league. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. And water is, in fact, wet, by the way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What, um, what, what would he be saying if he were managing Sunderland and he had to go to Plymouth? Would he be getting yeah, exactly. even more upset? Exactly. They do some travelling, don't they? That's yeah, that's they a day some... and a half out. Aren't so they? the Plymouth, I suppose, but the opposite way around. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Plymouth are not near anyone. All their games are miles. You've away. got a couple of hours. It's not a huge you... game for them though. Tomorrow night, it's not. It's just another game. Just another one. <laughs> We've got just all these graphics game. in the frigging in the in the brand and stuff. Like obviously, we've spoken about the, uh, the the written complaints that we've had six letters this season so far. Apologising, oh, yeah. saying it was a penalty or a red card. We'll probably get two more letters now. It won't help us because it doesn't like uh, feel like a fair outcome. You know, we, we, can, we can do all this to death. Uh, did you see the West Bromwich Albion handball? By the way, oh my god, yeah, 
the yeah. penalty in fact um so this i mean I, I don't know if you can see obviously the guy in the middle is being struck by the ball way about what would you say yard yard and a half two yards out he's of on the, the, edge of the gate, isn't he? yeah yeah so he's like he's like two yards away there one two yards at least outside the box um you know and and they've got awarded a penalty for that and that's blast been blasted straight at his face you could forgive it's him unbelievable to not give a friggin even in a bit of free kick but they got a penalty I mean, fucking hell. And, and then, obviously, you flick it round to us and, you know, Superman he is, but punching Rodan <laughs> and the ball, and we get fuck all. It's unreal. Honestly. It's, it's a right absolutely laugh. unreal. It's just ace. It's just ace, I can't isn't it? Speak. It's killing me. I can't speak. Um, atmosphere, then. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the atmosphere a little bit um, briefly before we move on. What did you think the atmosphere was like at the ground? Has it improved? No. I uh, obviously watched it on telly because I'm a um, and Sky it TV sounded it person. sounded better. It did. I mean, I'll be honest. It sounded better than recent games when I've been up there uh, in parts. Uh, but again, that there's, there's just a sense of nervousness around the place. And I think yeah. Jay's right. That you know the the patient build up. It's not what we used to or what we expect. Even under Jesse Marsh, it wasn't patient. You know, it was a bit fucking yeah. bonkers and crazy. So we haven't been used to it. We had we had Gracia and and, and Allardyce who basically just did anything so we didn't really care what happened then but but actually under the previous two managers before them it was all very chaotic and fast paced and high energy and and we're just we're not used to it i don't think i think we've been i mean i'm not going to say jesse marsh spoiled us but we've, we've certainly had some 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 a certain style of football or, or certain mm. energy um that, that that's parallel with with the football that we play and we're not used to that patient build-up, so I think as fans, we we need to maybe mm. accept that that's 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 the way he plays. And I know it's probably coming at a, 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 you know the wrong stage of the season for us to start getting start to try to accept that when it, when we've only four games left. But yeah, I just think I just think that's that's something we do need to get used to. It's it's frustrating as fuck, but I think I think Fark has always said he he, he would love to have a hundred percent possession every game because you know they can't score without the ball, and ultimately. We can't score with the ball, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, we seem to be struggling no, a little bit of late. Um, but yeah, I, th I think Saturday. I think Saturday will be different. You know, there were always an air of expectancy against Sunderland. I mean, a lot of people thought we'd batter them. I were a little bit. Mm, I think I, I think I predicted one nil. I think I didn't. I don't think I didn't think it'd be that much of a nice scoring game. But Blackburn needs to be different. It absolutely needs to be different, and they need to be. Um, they need to be spurred on. Um, speaking of being spurred on, there was a certain person uh, having a little bit of a speech at Thought Patch this uh, this the, well this week. Uh, it's been broken to us, obviously, chaps, that uh, our good friend and some might say club legend, Mr. Stuart Dallas, is leaving us at the uh, well, leaving football entirely at the end of the season. Um, uh, well, what do you think to that? Firstly, gutted. Yeah, I'm absolutely wounded, yeah. mate. He's um, he's been. Arguably my favourite player over the last three, over the last ten, ten or so years. Um, really? Yeah, I think I think we've had better players and more exciting players in Raf, but I think just in terms of his his persona and you know when he first signed he was dog shit. He played on the left wing, I think. What for dog his shit? Time. We're all right. He was. Right. It was. It, we it wasn't shit. that great. And then Uwe Rosler signed just, him, didn't he? Yeah, and I just think that I just think that we've just seen him improve and. And become almost Mister Leeds, you know. He, he would have yeah. played anywhere for us, and and do it well, and do it at hundred and ten percent, and that's all you can ask. But yeah. he, he had the ability as well, so you know we've we've seen we've talked about the goal at Stoke, the goal at Man City lives will live long in my memory when when we snatched it in yeah. uh, in, in COVID. Um, and yeah, just just such and such a nice guy. I had the pleasure of meeting him with my two little girls as well, so that's another memory. I just think I just that felt he was. You knew what you were getting with Stuart Dallas when he when he was playing mm. every game, mm. and you were always going to get at least a seven out of ten. I don't ever remember him having a poor game um, for us, and 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 yeah, it's, it's a sad, sad state of affairs. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I think we, very professional player, wasn't he? Yeah, it was inevitable. I think we all saw it coming, but we yeah. just had that. We were all holding that little bit of hope that we might see him touch a bit of grass before um, at some stage this season. I think I think ideally the the. The, the the guys at, at, at Leeds would probably have liked to have kept it till later in the season, but I think I, th I, I mean I might be being sceptical here, but I think they've 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 actually released it earlier to try and give the crowd and 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 the lads a bit more of an additional mm -hmm. boost over these last four games. Mm. 
Gil is in the comments and has said one of, if not the only player to come out with any home uh, of that home game against Derby with any credit. I would add Shackleton to that list because I think Shackleton played an absolute blinder as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's my favourite Dallas memory, even though it's a bit of a shit Same. one at the end of it because, Same. you know, obviously we didn't do anything in the playoffs, but, you know, that, that feeling. He had, he had the uncanny ability to be able to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and take the whole team up a notch. That's like, what he did like in that Derby game. Click, click did as well. and he had, he, had that, he had that kind of effect on the team, uh, as did Pablo. There have been a couple of players like that. I mean, Pablo is probably my most favourite player at Leeds ever, to be mm. fair. I mean, I, I, I thought Pablo Hernandez were just an absolute magician. But like you say, you, you obviously relate to Dallas, and, and, and he is an absolute, you know, a credit to a, a professional. You know, he, he's been such a great guy. I think we all we all kind of got excited when we found out that he'd gone, uh, that he'd returned to first team training this season, and we're yeah. all like, "Fucking hell, finally we might actually see him play." And I think we're all kind of holding out to the fact that he might make an appearance this year. Yeah. I was kind of hoping for, you know, if if obviously the Southampton game were going to be a dead rubber, that he, he might make an appearance off bench or something. Yeah, you exactly. Know. That would have been. So I'd, I'd, cool. I'd have loved that to give him. A Put him in the goal for the last two minutes if it's a dead rubber. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, um, so, I think they they're having him on the pitch out there at the next home half game. Time, half time, half time at Blackburn. So don't go and get your piney your peas and whatever else and your fancy chips. Those of you non-South standers, um, you know, get yourself to pitch side and give. Uh, let's give Stewie D the uh, the, the reception and the send off. He's, he's, he's earned it. He's earned it. Absolutely. I looked at uh, LUFC data, our good friends, uh, on, mm -hmm. the, on the Twitterverse, and I, I've, I've pulled a few of their stats out. I'll, I'll just bring up a little graphic of his little face, because he's such a lovely lad. Uh, Stuart Dallas, 266 games totally, uh, 214 starts, 111 games won, 72 Premier League games, 28 goals, 18 assists, 9 seasons, which is mental, really. Yeah. Um, 9 Premier League goals. Three starts as a captain, three times Leeds Players Player of the Year, one times Leeds Player of the Year, one times Leeds Goal of the Season, one championship title, and one Leeds United icon. There you go. Do you know how many managers he's played under? I'm going to guess. guess. Oh, God. Oh, 17. <laughs> I'm going to go. Stuart Dallas's appearance by Leeds United manager right at the bottom is Jesse Marsh. He's played eight. Uwe Rosler, 12. Paul Heckingbottom, good old Paul. Whip ball, we are ball. 13. Thomas Christensen, 19. Gary Monk, 35. Steve Evans, 37. Anyone want to guess how many he played under Bielsa? 121. Jay? Uh, I'll say 130. I can't remember how many. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, you're in right, Paul Park, lads. Uh, 142 games for Bielsa. Ooh, there you go. So, there what an go. absolute So, guy. how many gaffers did he play for? I think it was... Is it, it 17, well, be, like Cooper, be, same um, amount? Yeah, it, that's not all. That's just appearances. He might have made one or two under... Did he play under Redfern at all? I don't think he did. And did Rosler. He? Rosler, Darko. Who else? Did he have Gary Monk? Uh, Were Gary Monk in there? Gary they'll Monk have had Hocker Day, won't they? Yeah, Gary Monk, 35 appearances under Gary Monk. The Hocker Day. No, I don't know. Hocker Day, Hocker Day were after, um, uh, uh, before Rosler, sorry. I don't know. I think that's right. it. I think that's I think that's all of them. Yeah, yeah. Rosler brought him in. Did he? And the Hock was before Rosler, yeah. 100%. I don't remember Rosler bringing Dallas Hocker Day was um, the first manager under Chilino, wasn't he? Yeah. Scoops. Yeah. Scoob, yeah, Scoobala. There'd be a few that he's missed off. He might not have played under Scoobs, though. He might have been injured by then. Well, he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Because we're in Premier League. Anyway, he's going to be sorely missed. But apparently, he's sticking around at the end of the club. And I've seen a tweet of uh, someone saying that the uh, that, that Leeds have offered him some kind of um, coaching role. So whether it's something to do yeah. with the academy or something. It'd be great to keep him around the around the squad and around the club. It especially was. around Thought Batch, because he's an absolute top guy. Same as Cooper, you know, and, and, and a couple of others. Yeah, he might not be up to scratch anymore, but, you know, them sort of players that you want to keep around your club. You know, he's a fantastic captain, is Cooper, and he's still very, very much, you know, needed and very well thought of at Thorpe Arch and around the squad. So, you know, them kind of players you want to keep around, don't you? Hopefully we can get yeah, Pablo yeah. over as well. So there's been, he's actually a been a Leeds player under 11 different gaffers, apparently, um, but he's not 11. played from all. Not yeah. played from all. Well, that's fair, fair enough. enough. So what did I um, say, well, not far off. I think so. I, I think, think you, you said 15, didn't you? Like, it? Did I? Fuck, I said 11. I said 17. I might have done, I can't yeah. remember. Well, well no, no doubt somebody will watch it back and correct me. Yeah, Ambassador, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, ambassador. yeah. Absolutely, we love a little bit of ambassadors. Yeah. Love Is there anyone wearing, right. wearing Lucas the cop cat anymore? Uh, I haven't seen him for a while. I haven't seen that. For, <laughs> I, I think tell he you. went to. Uh, I think he went over the Rainbow Bridge, didn't he? Oh, did he? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, it's actually it's actually a relation of uh, a relation of mine. So my brother in law's uncle. It, he used to be Lucas the cop cat. All oh, oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Was he Ellie the elephant I before I that as well? I didn't, I didn't know that. I don't think so. <laughs> um, some old Roy, wasn't it? Um, fucking hell. But it's his, it was his uncle. Okay. I only found out there when he died. I'm like, no ways if that would happen. But anyway, oh, we nice. digress. Um, do any of you have a shit take of the week, chaps? I do. Yes. Well, let me just roll. Roll, roll VT. Oh, shit, I've lost it. I've just scrolled past it. <laughs> hey, oh, has got a shit take this week, my little spot of fact. So mine is actually quite, quite relative because of how we've just spoken about. Um, obviously, he's he's been injured for the last couple of years, uh, despite still being in contact with the club and, and the club doing everything and him doing everything he can to uh, yes. get to, uh, full fitness. Can you bring your mic a bit closer to your grill because you're going a bit. It's like you speaking into a washing up bowl. Yeah, what? it was a bit weird. It's going to be is that better? Room. Yeah, that's better. That's it. That's it. Cool, cool. Um, so yeah, basically, um, it was just it, this is this is to do with uh, oh. obviously uh, this is apparently a Leeds fan and their comment on on Stuart Dallas's retirement. Um, uh, on the bottom of there of a Leeds United forward, sorry, a legend for Le club and country, Stuart Dallas has announced his retirement from professional football at the end of the season, and Jack has put. Club legend, but surely he could have realised before stealing wages for two odd years. Okay, now. He's on my nizzle. Wow, what a fancy take that is. Like he hasn't been busting a gut to get back. Wow. Like he didn't want to, like he hasn't been going into the training yeah. every day with all the lads and, and that, and suffering, <laughs> you know, suffering mentally Massively. because he can't Massively. play and, and all that sort of stuff, so... Yeah, that's my shit take of the week. That's just an easy, that's just an easy throwaway sort of take, though, isn't it? It's just some bell end that's got really angry and thought, oh, I've got a bit of an edgy sort of opinion. I'm so, just going yeah, to write some absolute reaction. Yeah. Imagine thinking somebody sat in dressing room week in, week out, and like gutted that they can't do anything about what's happening on the pitch when it's not going well. Like The guy loves the that's club, he really. cares. Have you all seen his uh, his video okay. of him going into the um, into the meeting room for all the other players yeah. and announcing that he was retiring? He's seen that obviously you could see how choked up he was and how hard it was to get through it. I mean, obviously right at the start, I mean, it, I think it cuts the start off because I think he kind of broke down and you see then obviously it cuts to Cooper coming and putting an arm around him and saying, "Come on, mate, get it out" or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can see how choked up he was and, and you could see how much of a mental struggle. He, he, he openly said how much of a struggle it's been, you know, what not wanting to come here, not wanting to turn up, but obviously the lads that have been around in the good group around him have, have encouraged him and kept him going and stuff like that. You know, and then you've got fucking ass wipes like that tweeting absolute tripe. It's just, it's such a shame that there's that many bell ends. I mean, don't get me wrong, I might, I might tweet some absolute shite every now and again, like we all do, but that's just malicious fucking shite, is that? Yeah. It's just, it is. It's, just it's needless, it's and stupid. it's just trying to be edgy for. Somebody just you know, wants a reaction, and they obviously don't get much attention. And 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 yeah, they're just being being an. Adam Forshaw was saying when he got you know stealing a living and all that sort of stuff. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can't really compare Adam Forshaw to Stuart Dallas, but it's still, it's not. You don't want to see it, really, do you? No, no, you anyway. don't. Anyway, next chic take, please. I can put mine in if you want. I've got oh. this guy here. Oh. Good old Ben. He said, uh, said it pre rad sign up. Chilino left us in a better place than when he brought us. Well, he says brought because he can't talk properly. Uh, Rad's left us in a far can't worse speak. position than when he brought the club. Uh, Chilino, a more competent club owner than Rad's. Well, Raz, he says, but I think he means Raz. I mean, Raz it's just a, it's just a litany of errors in it, but it's just crackers. It's crazy talk. It's. Did you reply to him? I haven't, but Gilly did, so I didn't need to. Gilly said, what a load of shit. So that, <laughs> that covered yeah. it, basically. Absolutely. Um, Blunt and straight to the point there. Matthew, well it, done. It's just, it baffles me, stuff like that, because it's like, we all know Rads wasn't perfect. He was a bit of a fucking knob. But to say the club was in a better place when Chilino left than it was when Rads left is insane. The yeah. only real, real big black mark for the Rads era is the, the 
Augustine stuff, you know. If it weren't for that, you you wouldn't even be having this debate, I don't think. I mean, there are plenty of little blemishes, you might say, uh, in his... Oh, no, I know, but I just mean... In his brief ownership. Of Chilino, but, yeah, I mean, but then again, I mean, Chilino were a dickhead. Let, let's be right, fair, oh. he were a dickhead, but he stabilised yeah, the club initially. He, he, he he's he's he one did. big reason why we've still got a frigging club to support. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. You know, and... and but, I, I, but, credit but then he destabilised it. Yeah, he, he, rock, he rocks the boat and he was a dickhead and he needed to go and he did. We got Raz in. Raz, by the way, Raz. We got Raz <laughs> and uh, and his good friend Victor in um, mm. and, and, you know, the rest is history there. But, you know, for a time, you know, going from that absolute dipstick Italian, not Cal, I mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> sure, you, know. you mean a real Italian? A real Italian. Uh, there, is a, yeah. there is a poll. There is a poll in the uh, in the YouTube. Oh, if you are okay. watching for YouTube, you can vote in that. And, and your options are Dallas on the Dole or Salino. A modern day messiah. Selenio, God, I haven't heard him being called that for a while. Um, but when, but when, uh, Chilino. 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 No, I, 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 I'm as bad as Carl at pronouncing bloody foreign names. Yeah, clearly, <laughs> training uh, grounds were half shut. There were no kitchen. There were no pool. He drained the I pool. know, but he had to. He had to people bring, bringing hey, their own listen, dinner. They had to wash their own up. kit. I can't say. Do you reckon they washed all the darks with the whites? Anyway, <laughs> mate. I actually met him. Yeah, I've anything. got a funny story about Massimo. I met him. I went to Derby away, I think, one season. I think we won. Chris Wood scored. I think we won 2 or 3 1. And I went to walk back to the train station and I was sat with him all on the train all the way from, from Derby to Leeds. And he's actually quite quite a nice guy. Like, I mean, fucking nuts. Like, absolutely absolutely bad shit mental. Mad as a bag of cats. Like, did he keep he opening mad. his cigarette tin in front of his face a lot. Um, cigarette yeah. tin. Yeah. When when me and uh, Luke interviewed Brian McDermott, like he spilled the beans. I mean, he said a lot before we got onto the actual oh, yeah. show because there's a lot that obviously he couldn't say. Yeah, yeah. But he, he, there's some of the stuff that he told us, wasn't it, Luke? We were just like, I was like, yeah. please, we, we can delay this podcast. Please tell me more, <laughs> tell me more. I, I, we were both like, fucking hell, really? No way. Yeah. Um, but some of the shit he used to get up to. But then when Rads and his cronies came in, you know, there was an air of professionalism there. Initially, we got promoted. Um, we, yeah, we, they we had a... Bielsa and Raf, and exactly. And then it all he, went to absolute fucking rat shit because they fucking brought the American in and uh, signed a load of fucking dipsticks, and we got absolute shit carried away and Bosch straight down mm. to the championship. We went, and I think sometimes when people are saying fucking fuck out and we're absolute bottle jobs and this that, and the other, we've to just step back a little bit. And take into consideration what an absolute fucking mess this club were in at the start of this season, you know. Um, and to say that we're knocking on the door of the Premier League again, we're right in the thick of the promotion race. Now, you know, it's a detriment to what, you know, the people that have come in and, and rescued our club, really, if yeah. want of a better term. Because yeah. they have, you know, they've pulled us right out of the fucking shit of the 49ers enterprises and the, and the people that they've put on the board. And we're in a much better, healthier place than last time. we put the money where the mouths are so far. Exactly. So, you know, we, we, we've just got to, I think we're all overreacting a little bit, you know, with, with, with mm -hmm. it. And, but the thing is, you know, it's, it's cheap for us to say this sort of thing on, 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 a, on a podcast and stuff. At the end of the day, the guys have got to go and do, and do the business on the pitch. And that's, you yeah. know, that's where it matters. So, um, so, hopefully, so hopefully they will do. Um, have we got any more shit takes? Any more shit I mean, there's, I haven't there's met... a couple. There's a couple I've not, I've not put in there. There's, there's obviously the... Um... The reciprocal pricing idiots at Southampton oh, raising God, their yeah. necks oh, out of water Jesus again. Uh, but, I mean, we've done that to death, so yeah. Um, and then reciprocal. the other one is, and the other one is the people's interpretation of these finances that have been released this week. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, are you going to get Kieran on and do another pod again or something? Is it worth? Well, I'll, on speak to I'll speak to him. I should ask him. I will ask him. But ask him. Uh, the problem is, I think he's taken off a bit since we last spoke to him and uh he tried joe tried getting well. him on and he couldn't go on to joe's he didn't have time to go on really? joe's so um yeah i mean like, i'll ask Did him where the ogs yeah, we, find these people, with us, we find these we find these people us. and build them up and and release them into the wild right, fucking west of the twitter sphere of Leeds united yeah, they mean nothing without us and then they and forget we, us and we say, stay no, here fuck you. we stay here and they go up here. <laughs> well obviously you're a bit further down but yeah i get where you're coming from jay why don't you go fuck yourself um i've tried this oh, is a God. Leeds United podcast. We'll do the uh, the uh, is dark that one. The... Tale? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunny rabbit tail. 
Anyway, go well, less of that. Less of that. That's for the. Uh, that's for the sex room. Hey, what am I saying? Absolutely. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't even know where this is going. Let's rewind a little bit, shall we? Um, Blackburn. <laughs> Cut quickly for this one. Move it we'll, just, we'll just end that and fucking move on. Do you uh, want to do a few minutes before we go on to Blackburn? Ah, of course. Yes, go on then. I'm glad you reminded Let's do me. It. Go on, I'll, do I'll, it. I'll let you fly. I'll let you fly through them. I'll read them out. Uh, but there's there's not actually that many. Uh, Paul Brennan said earlier on, at least we got a clean sheet. Talking about the last game, we haven't pressed the nuclear yeah. button. Um, uh, stick together when we're all together. And strong nuclear button. Oh, mm. yeah, the nuclear button. What, Putin um, style. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think one thing one thing is definitely worth noting is that we would probably be having a very different conversation or BNC part if Ipswich had won last night. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, it'd be, so, it'd be real doom yeah. and gloom. I think the saving grace is that we're still in touching distance of everybody around us. There's only a point. I mean, we're only one draw and th- them them losing one away from going above them again because of goal difference. So we, we are better, still there and thereabouts. Better goal difference than Leicester as well now. Yeah, only Five just. One. But yeah, thanks for that, Paul. Um, oh, I missed one. Then I've just deleted one about Drupe. I think he meant. I think it was something about trying Nonto in the ten position. Um, he plays there for Italy. Drupe? His name was Drupe. I think he's gone now. I've deleted oh, his like comment. The, Sorry, Drupe. Like the character. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but my thing, I think I think my argument to that is this really isn't the time to be trying new stuff. No. Not not would overly you, new. Would you I not mean, give Ruta a game off though? Bit of a rest. Have you have you finished starring your comments? Like have you, there's there's six left to go through. No, no, this is one of the comments, but I deleted it. All right, sorry, go on. Carry on. Um, so his his comment was about was about uh, playing Nonto. And I just don't know if this is the time for an experiment. That's all for me. Yeah, I get that. Hmm. My um, argument is that you, we we scream and we, Matteo Joseph's name was was being sung from a roughly the 60th minute when when evidently we started to try and play football. Yeah. Um, they made the first substitution for Nonto in the first in the 71st minute for Kamara, but you know, I mean what. what 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 can you say? Not right. Please lot. fucking inspire me, Luke. Please try. What would you like me to talk about? I don't know. Droopy. Inspire you about 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 droopy. About, about droopy about droopy. I am very very happy. Oh, Christ, that, was <laughs> that was so fucking accurate. I forgot where my point was going. To be fair, I forgot where my point would to be going. But we'll, we'll, we'll just skip. We'll skip past that. Yeah, good, next one. Block. Next one. Uh, Carl McMichael starting eleven is debatable. He says, "What is? What isn't? What isn't his Farker's unwillingness to change Fucking things hell. in a game? Eight two minutes this before tactical quickly. changes is too late and a bit of a fart trait. We look flat. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Fucking hell. We were talking about the fucking experimentation of the starting eleven, weren't we? Yeah. Drew, course, we're yeah. Fucking hell. That's right. We're back in the room. Yes, three, two, one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean. A lot of people were singing uh, uh, Matteo Joseph's name, but at the end of the day, Matteo Joseph's going to make an impact. Could you see uh, Bamford doing the same or having that same sort of impact? No, that's, that, that's, that's, my, that's part of the reason I would still... I mean, I don't want to go on this Bamford fucking Joseph thing forever, but no, 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 see, everyone to. seems to be doing it. But but the reason you don't do it that way around is because Bamford softens them up. Bamford, and, and I know Matteo Joseph might be able to do it, but again, it's an experiment, and you don't yes. get that impact from Bamford. So you almost no. potentially, if Joseph doesn't do it, you lose two strikes. Because fucked. bringing Bamford yeah, on at that stage is not going to make a difference. Absolutely. I'm ready to try, that's, Joseph. And I think that's... No, I think we just need to get Joseph on sooner. And the hope, yeah, yeah. hopefully that the sooner and the quicker that Fark, not that he will do, you know, we're 42 games in now, but the sooner that he realises this, hopefully... You know, by people shouting, uh, shouting and chanting his name at the 60th minute, then the better because he could have really impacted. Nonto impacted the game when he came on, and then they brought Roberts, um, Joseph, and Piru on. Even Piru had a, had a decent part to play. He, he did all right when he came on. Yeah, he did. Do you, you know, know what though? Just... I'd be tempted to put Joseph in from the start. Now I wasn't thinking that before. But the why last game. though? Why? The reason why is because for all the stuff that people say about Bamford, all the good work that he does, dragging players out of position, which is all true, and he does do it, but it's not leading to goals for anybody at the moment, is it? There's nothing is coming that, Is that it. his fault, or is that the creativity? Oh, um, it's it's a combination, mate. It's, you know, everyone's to blame for that. It's not. Did he get? Did he get? Do you think he had one clear chance at the weekend? And I, I mean, we can go back to the game before anywhere and he spooned that fucking effort. But I mean, did he have one clear chance at the, uh, against? Someone? I'm not. I'm not sure he did, but what I'm saying yeah. is, 
the movement and stuff that he does is not creating chances for other people either because no one's scoring goals as a result of him. We've we've dried up a little bit in the last few the games. The thing is, though, Jay... I, I'd just I, like I, to see something different with a goal scorer in there if the other thing's not right. working. I totally get where you're coming from. And to a degree, I do agree. You know, it's I, mm. I can see why people are pining for, 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 for change even though most of us think, no, it's pointless changing now. We've got four four games to go. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, the ball hardly got to Bamford at the, at the weekend. And it didn't, you know, against Coventry and stuff like that. No, you know, yeah, it, no. It was cut can, off in the middle. Can, I can so, at the end of the day, Joseph see. might have been up there at the top, but he'd have had no fucking ball, just like Bamford didn't get in any ball. Yeah, no, we weren't, we weren't I, I going can... Some of them lost the fucking ball 20-odd times. Dan James didn't see any of the frigging ball. Mm. At the end of the day, Mario Joseph's not going to get the fucking ball. So, if he's ineffective... If you're all going to take him off at 60th minute because he's been ineffective and hopefully Bamford's going to come on, he was not going to do fuck all because he's not an impact no. player. No, I know. I, know. So it's, I, it's can, see, them, I can see that argument. I can see that yeah. argument. I, think, I, think I, think Joseph, I genuinely can see both sides of it. I think Joseph is relishing that 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 those those minutes to come on and make an impact. Impact. Somebody mentioned there about him doing it at Chelsea. Completely, completely different. There was no pressure. We nobody expected yeah, different. him to win. Look, he, had, he scored yeah. two great goals. Fantastic. But he's not. It's not. It's not the. T- time or the place to introduce him into a gritty dirty championship game where you're going for promotion. Paddy Bamford's been there and done it all. He's been promoted mm-hmm. with us in, in gritty championship performances. Yeah, yeah. Whilst you might not be getting goals out of him, what you know you're getting is him putting himself about and drawing fouls and 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 look yeah. we've not been getting the goals Jane and it's I mean you don't have to be you don't have to be a professor to, to, to notice that but mm-hmm. but but we probably wouldn't have been getting free kicks in dangerous areas. He was the only one maybe, for yeah, me maybe. in that first half who was getting in any sort of good positions. And and mm-hmm. that's gotta that's gotta start that the book's gotta stop with the creativity. If he's not getting supplied with the ball, how can how can, how's he meant to score? I mean he had that one shot yeah, yeah, right, which fair. wasn't a, which wasn't a, which wasn't an opportunity. That's fair. And then the other one where he blasted it across goal, which could have been a shot or a cross. If it was mm-hmm. a cross, it'd have took Dan James' head off if he had read it anyway. But um so yeah, look I, again. Let's not let's not get into it too much. Let's go back to yeah, yeah. Um, let's go back to Carl's. Uh, well, we've covered that pretty much. Uh, yeah, eight yeah, two yeah, minutes. Get so. get get the change. Make the changes earlier in games like that. Absolutely, I think you've so on. Um, Saudi says we have lost a little bit of spark since the international break. Welsh guys haven't been right after that loss. Do you agree? Do you agree they've not been the same? Um, I think that may be a factor. It's it's not all of them, is it? No one's really sort of shone. Roots has probably had the worst run of games I've seen from him this season in the last sort of three games. Somerville's not been great either. No, no, he hasn't. Because he's got he's, massive he's credit in the He's taking back. people on as well. Well, he has, but he's just getting tackled. Mm. You know, and I think he, he draws a lot of fouls in, but referee, he got fouled quite a few legitimate fouls last night. And the, the referee they don't get given though, do they? Last night. Why do I keep saying last night like it's a bad go? <laughs> Sorry, on, uh, on Tuesday. But I just think, you know... Even he's been off the boil a little bit. The only one that seems to be looking like, apart from obviously Joseph when he's been introduced, is, is Nonto. Nonto seems to be trying to really hard and he's actually impacting the games positively. I've said this, yeah. Like when he came on in the previous game, he looked like he would have torn them up if he'd had a good sort of 20, 30 minutes at it. He, he, was, he, he instantly was direct and getting involved and trying to attack and take shots and put crosses in against Coventry. So I wanted to see him start against um, Sunderland personally. When when Nonto got introduced in the seventy first minute, we started playing well because obviously he took up a, a middle position from from mm. Kamara. And the thing is, Nonto will take on players. Kamara doesn't. He does his little shimmy this, shimmy shimmy that, and then fucking passes it backwards or to the side, which is good mm. at when we're taking the piss and we're and we're beating and we're and we're on top of the game. We were yeah. in control of the game, but we were doing absolutely fuck all with that ball. No, Nonto is completely different because he will, he will, he explodes into life, and he might do a couple of twists and turns, but he, he's got that instant outlay to either to Dan James or to whoever else that's around him, and he's moving. Kamara does he, not move yeah. forward like freaking Nonto does, it, so he you gets can see the why he might impact a game like that. He gets to the box and he either puts a cross in or he cuts in and goes for a shot, and yeah. you get that from him plenty during the game. You know, you, that's what we're lacking at the minute. It's just someone grabbing hold of it by scruff at neck. And having a go, the amount of times people in the Sunderland game were shouting "shoot, shoot, shoot, shoot," and it just you know it never came. 
We only had a few actual shots from sort of outside the box, maybe two or it, three. It blows my tiny little mind that we don't have more shots from outside boxes. It's, it's crazy, crackers. especially when there's a fucking an absolute sea of red and white in front of you. You just yeah. think, just have a crack. It could take a deflection. You know, Ipswich do it. Ipswich have sh- uh, uh, shoot from outside box and get loads of deflected frigging goals. Why the fucking hell aren't we doing it? They have to be being told not to, because we've seen Bamford th- can it a ball. Be the case. Bamford yeah, yeah. can it a shot. You know what I mean? Like. There's no reason in my mind why he wouldn't like, especially if he's struggling to get on the ball in the area. There's no other reason to me why he wouldn't be like turning and having shots if, you know, if he'd not been told not to do that. Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Um, So going back to the original comment, yeah, I think they have a loon a little bit off the boil. Yeah. Um, so Saudi also says this season feels like two seasons. It has been a long one, hasn't it? It's felt like it has been a long one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it does. the last comment uh that we've got starred is um it's from not sorry it's not it's the penultimate one um is from nige saying guys what about the jka shambles now we knew about that anyway so i think I we mean, were talking it, about rads in the whole yeah. shit show and are we Black Black. are we shocked that we've um dropped the appeal or no nah, because so? these these guys have got they're fucking not. sense they know they're not going to win it's just yeah. going to cost them more money what's the point yeah, yeah. it's just going to drag us through media and it's shit that we don't want hanging over us so yeah end of day end of day we're banged to rights on it we, we screwed him. Yeah. You know, he yeah, wanted up to the task. He wanted the player we thought we were getting, but at the end of the day, there were a contract and we fucked him and that's cost us. Yeah, and absolutely. You know. And then the last Mark comment. Got last his, comment. Uh, sorry, Mark Edison's got his capital lock stuck on again. I can see <laughs> in the comments. He's, you know, he's, he's making a point here, Smarty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paul, last one, which is quite a nice one, I think, and uh, I think it's worth saying, is Paul, from Paul Brennan. Stu Dallas is a legend that talk he gave to the lads about Leeds United playing for Leeds and us the fans first class. I wish he was fit, healthy and playing. What a Leeds legend. Legend. We, uh, yeah, absolutely. I wish I'd remembered to look for my Stuart Dallas t-shirt that they gave us when we went to Arsenal after he got injured. I remember. I remember. And I, I never thought so we were sat here. About here. Just you wait. <laughs> Just you wait, son. I'm on. I'm on with uh, with with Danny and a few others on the Not Another Leeds podcast tomorrow evening. So I will be at my best self as ever. There'll be many many things. Of discussed course tomorrow. you will. I'll be in the comments. Freedom to give speech. you some stick. Um, Dallas let's, is a proper ledge. You're right, Gilly. Is. Proper ledge. That's let's right. move on to Blackburn then. Blackburn's last I few games, they lost. Um, I hope, they, hope, I hope. they lost five nil to uh, to Bristol City yesterday. Drew nil nil against Southampton. Sunderland they beat fucking Sunderland five one. Five one, yeah. Sweet baby Jesus. Um, lost to Ipswich one nil and drew away to Middlesbrough. So they're not on great form. Now then, Jay, I'll come to you first. What would our starting lineup be if you were picking the team? You don't have to go through every single position, but oh, basically, Jesus. what sort of what sort of changes would you make, if any, to our starting um, lineup for this game? If I was going to make a change, I would probably put Everything Roberts in at right back. I swap Archie for Kamara, take him out. Um, and I would possibly put Nonto in for Ruta or for James. I'm not sure which. I'd leave Bamford up front, despite what, what I said about Joseph. I, I, completely I think... contradicting everything you've just said. Because I were talking about that in a standalone sense, but if you're already okay. making two changes, I, I won't want to make another one. I don't think that I don't think that'd help. Piro not get uh, uh, Piro not make it in for you. Nah, he can go home. Um, <laughs> no, okay. he don't make it in. He'd be on the bench for me, but he won't make it in. I want Nonto in the starting lineup, and I would want Roberts in there. Okay, like I miss Colin Luke. Roberts. I am actually going to agree with Jay for once. Uh, I think I think Connor Roberts hell. offers. Gilly, and... Gilly, get this clipped. <laughs> yeah. I think Connor Roberts offers us far more in an attacking sense than Archie does at right back. Um, he does. He also, looks for an out ball. And Archie offers us far more in attacking sense than Kamara offers. And this is a game we need to go and fucking thump him, really, and set a platform and a precedent for the rest of the season. Um, yes. Put some, sh- put the shit up, up, up Leicester and uh, mm. and Ipswich, go win the game four or five by four or five. Um if- and if, if Roberts does um, play, Dan James will get the balls to get away down the wing from him. Well, Sorry. because they are Welsh brothers, is that what you're saying? Yeah, the line we'll kind of way. Well, yeah. We're talking about bringing Nonto in though for James, aren't we? Well, I said I might bring him in for Ruta because Ruta could do the break. 
it could be Ruta or James. Mm. I'm just thinking what's likely to happen if Roberts did come in, you'd probably still have Dan James on the wing if Farker's doing it. And he does get those direct balls out to him. He's he's good at that. I like that he he, he looks to start attacks. I've just, yeah, I've just yeah. seen someone's been removed from the virtual um, room. Um, okay. So, yeah, I think yeah. I think I think that's what I do. I think I think I think I don't. I still be playing Paddy Cree. I'd still even start Rutter because I think I think on his yeah. day he's he's the best player in the league. Um, yeah, leave Gruev in there and the the back four of of Roberts, Ampadu, Rodon, and Junior Furpo. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I think so. I mean, we we ta- given that he's obviously just coming back from an injury, if you want to call it an injury, even though it's just a, a minor operation that he had, Mister Rutte. Mm. You know that he, he might play shite for eighty eight minutes, but there'll be two minutes of pure magic from him, and that can unlock a defense. You know, and to to say that he, we we've been playing some very very difficult opposition as well over the last couple of games. They have completely. I mean, Sunderland completely bossed the middle of the pack. You know, we're really up and up mm. against it. We're, we're up to on on Tuesday. So yeah, I'd like to give him the benefit of doubt. Play a little bit more expansively, a little bit more open, and uh, obviously, hopefully, push on. If he's not looking yeah. like he, he's he's going to do anything, then fucking eye him off. It's Get, it's I a mean, bit. I, it's, it's a bit contradictory to what him. obviously Fark always does because he'll probably leave it to oh, uh, mm. fucking Rutter has been a bit shit. I'll, I'll wait until the 89th minute to bring him off. And then he will do, but you know, it's a bit like unfortunate for him, Smarty. Like we've been saying, oh, he's, he's been poor last few games, which he has. But a lot of the times when he's lost the ball, should have been free kicks that haven't been. So if we had half decent refs, we yeah. might not be looking at him as having been so bad because he would have won free kicks. But yeah, it's it's not happening. So change him out for me. Give him a, give him a day off. Bring him on back end of the game. Okay, interesting then. Interesting. So we might make a couple of changes. I would expect that we probably don't. I mean, Kamara. I think you're probably right. I, I think you know. I think if we were going to see any change, it might be Kamara. If 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 my money were to be on it, and and we'd see Robertson at right back and, and Gray up into midfield. But on the whole of it, based on what we've seen throughout this, the course of the season, he'll still pick his favourite boys, won't he? So, um, shall we get a couple of predictions? Yeah, who's top, who's top out of us? Like me. I think so. I think it's Bren. No, I was three. Three. Out, three. Out, Sorry, out of us three. Uh, Gilly's in the chat, though. I'm going to wait for Gilly. Gilly, can you put yours in? And Fastest the fans, finger if first for the fans, please. Whoever gets their prediction in first, you will win. Your prediction will go on the board. Um, Jay, we might as well start with you because me and you are a little bit further down the league. So go on, mate. Give us a, <sighs> give us a cheeky hell. prediction. Southie, lock it in. 3 1 leads. Bash. There you go. 3 0. So Shall I write these down? Shall I? 3 0 leads. <laughs> Fucking hell, go on. We've I think you need to something. get. I think you need to moisturise. Those hands sound very, very dry, James. I've been mechanicing, mate. They're covered in dirt. South has gone three-one. Jay has gone three-nil. Have we got? An, have we got? Oh, Christ! There's lots of people in there. Has Gilly given anything yet? Or has he no, miraculously he's disappeared staying. from the comments oh, all yeah. of a sudden? He'll all of a pop sudden. up won't he, after the press conference and then give us his prediction. Yeah. I'm going to go. 4-0. Fucking 4-0. Till he's up. How's your poll doing, by the way, Luke? Oh, uh, shall we come to that at the end, or do you want me to do it now? Yeah, yeah, go yeah, for it. Yeah, we'll end, do it. End. End. No, we'll, just, yeah. do, just don't want we'll you do to it forget end. it. We'll do it at end. Let, let's get a few okay. predictions out of the way. Obviously, uh, Willem Defoe, my, uh, our good friend. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. oh. Oh, here he is. He's gone far one leads. Oh, oh. <laughs> Why not well, is there a chicken or something in bloody? I think it's some sort of clucking. Is it? Are you wiggling your your leg, Luke? Yeah, yeah I'm a chair. <laughs> it sounds like a little. It's actually just kind of. Like, I can hear him back. I'm thinking it sounds like a fucking chicken clucking. I thought he had one of his chickens in bed with him or something. Um, I'm gonna not go. Ten. <laughs> Who's gone? <laughs> South has gone three one. Do you know what? I'm gonna. Um, I'm, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna match Jay. Yeah, I'm gonna go three 0 I'm going to go Why do you always leads. copy somebody? You because they're all low. I'm not going one nil because I think, and I don't think it'll be two nil. I think we're, we, I think the lads are going to pull it out of bag first, and we're going to give someone a good hiding. And if it ain't Blackburn, then it's not going to be anyone, is it? So, or maybe True QPR, that. but you know, we don't like London, do we? No, we don't. So, yeah, I think we'll lock them in. Um, Luke's got gout. 
That's what Zalfie right. says. Right. <laughs> That's his prediction. Does it, give, does it give you a squeaky foot, does it? That's a funny <laughs> STD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, uh, right then. So we've AJ, the you might have got some we've work here. Predictions. Can you work on oh, his mate? Oh, God. Can you I probably, I probably could, but I don't want to. Is it a sprinter? I like sprinters. They're all right. It looks like the sort of person does Mark. I've, I've met Mark a few times. He's a nice bloke, but he looks like the kind of person that would sell vegetables or uh, exotic fruits from a van, actually. I wonder Inside if it is. the road? A, yeah. I wonder if it is a Mercedes sprinter. That'd be funny. You get, we'll see you get a couple of those around Bradford and you just think, who wants to buy a lot of fruit and veg that's been sat next to a main road all day getting... Nailed on. Nailed on a CLK convertible. I could have guessed that. That was going to be my Fucking guess. Hell. <laughs> I bet he's got them sort of like sunglasses that are always like just fixed to the uh, sun visor on the passenger side as well, just in case he's flicking <laughs> out. Just flick him out. There you go. Fucking convertible. You've got to be a special kind of bloke to have a convertible. I think Gilly's got a convertible as well. Yeah. That's hot. Yeah, I'll, that's be, I'll, 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 I'll like, I don't really want to offend anybody here, but there's a type of person who does drive a convertible, isn't there? They only suit certain type of people. Small people. Wouldn't even say they suit people. Well, right. <laughs> it, okay, take me for example with my humongous bumps. I look, look like right Scooby dick. Doo. I look <laughs> a right <laughs> dick. I look like one of them fucking subutio oh, fucking players. You know, oh, I mean, has a once... convertible. He does. Say to your hairdresser. <laughs> he does have a chuffing. He does have a convertible. The lying bastard. <laughs> He's a are frigging you, are liar. You a hairdresser, Gilly. Are you a hairdresser? <laughs> You taking the frigging picture? I'll go. Do, I, I, he lives literally just that way. I will go and take a fucking picture. I'll do a live. Yeah, look at Gilly's car. Fucking nail technician, the fucking prick. Um, <laughs> that's, okay. that's where I was going with the convertible. <laughs> yeah, going, I didn't want to. <laughs> but yeah, someone with my size and, and my size of head. I, I mean, I once bought one of my dad's Audis because my my car had shit itself, and it were a convertible, and it was a sunny day last year. And I thought, Do you know what? I think I'm going to drop the roof. I went about hundred yards and thought, nope, and I put it straight back up because I fucking saw a reflection of myself and looked a complete and utter twat. So yeah. people like me, absolutely not. And Maybe pebbles, a little small driving, bald people like yourself might look all right in them. Well, when you when you're driving, the, the pebbles smack you on fucking forehead, don't they? Like, you know what I mean? There's no protection <laughs> yeah. for people. Like, it, yeah. you're Getting right. flies in my teeth and stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Jay, so, Jay, you're all right, aren't you? Yeah. It's like a little dodgem for you, isn't it, Jay? You've got a little Mazda, haven't you? Or you've had them? No, I had one. I had one before. I've got an MR2. I know, but it's in bits, so it don't count at the moment. So, you, well, yeah, it's a bit fucked then, you'd, you'd, you'd say. It's, yeah, it's getting there. I'm going to roll on to the next. Or to know better <laughs> with Rachel Adadeji. Do uh, either of you, by any chance, have a, a bitter for this week? No, mate. Because you I, get a few I, chest, lads. All I, would, all I would rant about would be shit referees, and we've already talked yeah, about Yeah, I think it. we've been bitter enough, haven't I we? Think about we've ref we've, and, we've and, well covered yeah. it, haven't we? We should have just played that at the start before we've we been did angry the enough. Yeah, I think so. It could have been just one or two, no better. Like instead of better, oh, we might no just and we'll just start talking about fucking leads in general. Oh, I think. Um, right then, so we don't really have much more to cover. We will say a few things about um, Andy's Man Club. Um, Andy's Man Club for the events left in April is the pool night at the. Oh Christ! Hold on, two seconds. Uh, the that's really small. I can barely read that. I'm getting older. Uh, pool night at the Northern it, Snooker yeah. <laughs> the Northern Snooker Centre starting at six thirty p.m. Uh, we will be on the tables upstairs. Do not ask for small donations, but the tables uh, to the tables. But this is not essential. If you fancy waving a few sticks around and throwing a couple of blocks of chalk at your mates, crack on and get yourself down there. They get a bunch of lads at Orton or Bear. Where am I? The Andy's Man Club guys are, are absolutely sound, and uh, obviously there were a few of us that went up for a walk. We obviously told you about it last week, but yeah, they're a great bunch of lads. Very warm, very welcoming. You will not be disappointed if you go to one of these events. Uh, Sunday, the 28th, uh, Barber Club at W2 Barbers on Easterly Road. Um, go down, get your get your nonce, your nonce. Oh Christ! Jesus Christ! Get your bonds. Bring, bring your Rolf Harris down with you. <laughs> <laughs> get your bonces trimmed. You can take your nonces with you if you like. You can do whatever you want with them. Um, yeah, all proceeds go to Andy's Man Club. Um, yeah, so if you need a trim, get yourself down there. Jay, do you do you want to go down there and get yourself a little trim, cheeky little trim? I don't need one yet, mate. I'm, I've not decided what I'm doing. You're looking very unkept. At least you're keeping the beard down, though. 
We've not gone all yeah, Gandalf I like yet it. again. I like it like this, you know. Yeah. I like it like this. Might go yeah. for a man bun next. We'll not see. sure of the I'm not sure about the mascara and the eyeshadow tonight, like, but Yeah. That's just bags, mate. There is no mascara or eyeshadow. Saving that for his uh, hot tub parties at the weekend. I had to um, I had to get up I had to get up at like seven AM this morning for this new job. And because I've been working from home for last year. I've been like rolling out of bed at sort of nine, nine thirty, and just logging straight on the computer. So it's been a shock to the system getting up at a normal time again. Cool storage, yes. yeah. Um, yeah, and on another. You know note, he's gonna do your back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. He's gonna get you. He's gonna get you. I'm just not gonna talk. Um, I've, I just, I've just realised. I've just realised Stuart Dallas retiring. We're gonna lose our Mister Utensil, aren't we? Yeah. Also, yeah. we forgot to mention that it's Pablo Hernandez's 39th birthday today. So happy birthday oh, to him. Lovely. Lovely. He watches our podcast, of course, because we're just a bunch of dickheads on YouTube. But happy birthday, Constantly, Pablo. Yeah. Um, have we got anything else to say, chaps? Anything else on your mind? Anyone else? No. Any tributes? Any shout outs you want to give to anyone? Because we're. No, I am doing. I am global. doing a challenge at the moment. I didn't. I didn't obviously do the uh, the walk with you guys from his man club. So I'm doing a separate challenge, raising money for cancer research. I'm doing a hundred press ups a day. I had a very heavy weekend, and I am a couple of hundred behind now. Uh, so I have got oh, a bit wow. of work to do. Um, yes, indeed. yeah. I it's the eleventh. I should have done eleven hundred. I've done just short of uh, just short of nine hundred. So I've actually got two hundred and thirty left to do. Uh, That's to not make. something you want to get behind on, mate. No, I know, I know. I, but I, I, I'm having a relatively quiet weekend, so I, I've been sort of hitting them the last couple of days, and I'm just yeah, going to try and go do, over over the next. Do twenty easy, every two, couple of hours or something, isn't it? Easy. Yeah, easy. I'll, I'll easy make them back up. Don't worry. Uh, so if you do want to sponsor my, it's on my Twitter and, and that. But you know, don't don't feel the need to. Yeah, we'll uh, well, I'll tell you what, mate. We'll uh, get, get tweet it out again, and we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll make, get it we'll, retweeted. We'll tweet it out. We'll, we'll retweet you. it for you. Yeah, get it out there. So if you have got a couple of quid to spare, please, for obviously the, uh, the sake of cancer research and stuff, go give uh, go give Luke a couple. That of goes for you as well, Sam. I might do. Would I you like the result you... of the shit take? I was just going to say, have you got your Ooh, poll yeah, results? Go I've got the poll results. Um. So, uh, if you were a betting man, which would you have bet? Which would you have gone for, Smarty? Come, uh, give me the options again. Sorry, We've got Dallas on the doll or Cellino, the modern day messiah. <laughs> I think I'm going to go for Cellino, the modern I'm day go messiah. For Chilino. Um, that lost quite comfortably. Uh, Dallas on the doll got 69, percent whereas Cellino, wow, oh, 69, uh, and Cellino, modern day messiah, got 31, percent and I'm going to end it right there. Excellent stuff. Fair enough. Right, thank you everyone else for joining us on this fine, fine evening. Um, hopefully it'll be a great result for us at the weekend. If you haven't done already, please subscribe to our podcast. I know there'll be quite a few people that are watching on YouTube, but if you can, head over there, hit the subscribe button. Uh, it helps us out because it makes us look really cool amongst our friends. Uh, apart from that then, thank you very much both of you for joining us. Thank you everyone else in the comments for joining us. Join us. like joining us. Both, oh, I thought you said both of you vaginas. Both of you vaginas. Well, yeah, I mean, whatever. You know, I'll call you worse outside of here. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you, guys, uh, that are watching. And uh, we'll see you for Baradi and Coke at the weekend. Take it easy. Oh, shit. Roll the, roll the button. <laughs>